How's it going, folks? I'm Cody Campbell with High Ground Gaming. Today we are unboxing and reviewing the Avermedia Live Streamer Mic 350. I'm going to start by walking you through the specs, then I'm going to open it up, let you take a look at what comes inside. After that, we'll go to the review portion where I'll give you my thoughts on it, and then we'll go to High Ground Gaming's final score. Stick around. Now, the live streamer mic is a condenser microphone. It has two different polar patterns, cardioid and omnidirectional, and it connects via USB Type-C. It has a sensitivity of minus 41 decibels and a frequency response of 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. It has DIRAC audio tuning built in. The dials on the front of the microphone control the mic's volume and mute, and the other one actually controls monitoring. You can adjust both microphone monitoring and system monitoring using the same dial there. On top of all that, there's actually some software for this. The Vibe Engine software is going to give you even more control, which we'll go into in the review section. I should mention that Avermedia also sent me the boom arm, the shock mount, and the pop filter that they sell separately to go with this microphone. I'm gonna be examining those and I'll talk about those in the review section, but I'm not gonna do a whole unboxing for these guys. That's about it for the specs on this guy though. Let's open it up. Got the quick start guide right on top here. Then we have the microphone sort of set into this cardboard. Beneath the mic, we have the USB type A to USB type C cable. Then inside that little box, it looks like it comes with a mounting plate for the desk, a thread adapter, and a USB type A to USB type C converter. So uh, this cable here could be C to C if you want. Overall, I like the design on the microphone a lot. That little red ring at the top gives it a little bit of a gamery accent, but other than that, it looks very professional. Up on the front, we've got the two dials. The top one here is for the volume control and the mute, as I mentioned before, and the bottom one here is for the mic and system monitoring. We've got the headphone jack and USB Type-C input on the bottom there, as well as a switch that looks to be how you control switching between cardioid and omnidirectional modes. All in all, that's pretty nice. I can't really think of anything off the top of my head that this seems to be missing. All that's left to do now is to plug it into my PC, test it out, see how it sounds, and we'll be right back with the review section. Don't go anywhere. All right, folks, I've spent some time with the Avermedia Live Streamer Mic 350, and I'm ready to talk about it. But first, like and subscribe if you haven't already. Okay, so for this whole portion, I'll be speaking into the mic. That way you can get a good feel for how it sounds. Uh, but we're going to start by talking about the build quality. First of all, this uses a high-powered neodymium capsule, which obviously sounds pretty good. That coupled with the full metal housing gives it a pretty warm sound, which I enjoy. Uh, aesthetically, I think it looks pretty nice. It's got the all black except for that little red ring on top design, which is a pretty good combination between professional and gamery. I think it looks looks good without being too flashy. Aside from the aesthetics though, the design is just pretty smart. It's got the volume dial and the monitoring dial right up front, which is very easy. On the bottom, we've got the switch for going back and forth between the two polar patterns. It's out of sight, which is fine because you're not gonna be switching that too often and it's really easy to find. You've also got the USB type C and the uh, 3.5 millimeter headphone jack down there. All pretty good design choices, in my opinion. The only thing that I don't really like about the physical build of this is the mounting arm here. It's a little wobbly. Here, I'll show you. See how much play that has in there? That's not great, and there's no real way to tighten it, at least not one that I've found. Uh, this dial on the bottom doesn't do it, so... Yeah, that's a little frustrating. Overall, you're not going to be moving your mic around too much, probably, so it's not that big of a deal, but it is a little frustrating because it's just added vibration when you move it. You don't really want to worry about that vibration creating extra sound, so that is a little irritating. Now let's move on to sound quality, and I think this sounds pretty good. It's not the best microphone I've tested. 
not by quite a bit, but considering the $200 price point, it's pretty nice. Uh, most microphones that sound better than this are going to cost significantly more. And then you're going to have to buy other equipment usually. They're not usually USB mics, so you're going to have to buy uh, XLR cables and, and some sort of XLR mix board and pickups and all kinds of other stuff that's going to run you a bunch of extra cash. For $200, this is pretty good. There may be one or two other USB mics that can compete at this level. Uh, and they're going to cost around the same amount, so that's that's not bad. Overall, I think this has a pretty warm, full sound to it. It is a condenser microphone, which means that it's going to be a little bit more sensitive than a dynamic microphone would be. That's good for uh, recording voices, typically. So basically what I'm doing right now, it would be good for live streaming. It would be good for podcasting. It would be good for recording audiobooks or voiceover or any of that sort of stuff. Those are kind of the best use cases for condenser microphones, where dynamic microphones are typically better for singing. Or if there's just a wide range, like if you go from speaking very softly to shouting, you're probably going to want a dynamic microphone. Uh, but for most people, I think condenser is probably the better option. Having both cardioid and omnidirectional polar patterns is also a big bonus. Cardioid is really best for recording one voice, while omnidirectional picks up from 360 degrees. So if you ever want to record with a second person and not be like squeezed side by side, so you're both speaking directly into it, omnidirectional would work really well for that. Now let's move on to the Vibe Engine software, and this is where it gets pretty cool. Okay, so I've got the Avermedia live stream mic all set up right here. I'm going to go ahead and go over the Vibe Engine software real quick, show you what features it has, and I'll be talking into the mic the whole time. That way you'll get a good feel for how the mic sounds, and you'll also get a good feel for how it changes as we make some adjustments in the software. So let's dive into that. Okay. So here is the Vibe Engine software. At the top here, we have a voice test. So you can sort of monitor the visual voice waves at the top here. This is really convenient because the voice test allows you to record a quick test and then you can listen back to that as you're adjusting things in the actual software. So testing, testing, one, two, three. Please subscribe to High Ground Gaming. And you can play that back. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Please subscribe to High Ground Gaming. All right, and so you can use that as a sort of a baseline for all the different things you're gonna be changing. Uh, but here, let's go over the features real quick. So up here, we have the uh, headphone monitoring, and you can adjust that on the microphone itself on this uh, dial, which is at the bottom of the mic, but I have it upside down, so it's at the top for me. You can adjust that here if you prefer to be able to see the the actual numbers, the actual range and stuff like that. But uh, it's the same thing that the dial does, so it's pretty straightforward. Same with uh, mic volume. You can do that with the dial, too, or you can adjust it on here. And then we have the various different microphone effects that you can apply. Noise suppression, noise gate, echo cancellation, effects, compressor, EQ, and clipping shield. You can just turn these on or off here so noise suppression on noise suppression off that's pretty straightforward and you can leave their actual effects preset to what avermedia had them set up as when they established it but let's dive a little deeper let's see what options this has here and you can uh, find those on this uh, menu on the left hand side here so let's start with scenario this is just a general setting area for what you intend to use the microphone for uh, we've got instrument, singing, podcast, or chat. Right now, I have it set to podcast. So um, if you want to record a guitar, you'd use instrument. If you're singing a song, you'd use singing, obviously. But for these two, honestly, I think podcast is just better. And I'll show you, I'll show you the difference between them real quick. So here's chat, and we'll go ahead and run that voice test real quick so you can really hear the difference. I'll run it once for chat and then switch it over to podcast. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Please subscribe to High Ground Gaming. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Please subscribe to High Ground Gaming. So you could definitely hear the difference there. Podcast is is much richer, warmer, fuller, uh, just just all around 
better sounding to my ear. The only advantage I could say to chat is because the podcast voice is, is a little deeper and fuller, it might muddy the chat channel a little bit. Um, the chat voice is sharper, so there might be an element of clarity there that you would want in a group chat for a competitive game. If you're playing at a competitive level, that might be something you're interested in. But in general, I think podcast is just going to be better for everybody. Like even in chat games, you're going to sound better to your teammates. So yeah, that's just my two cents. If you're a big Valorant player or something like that, and you want your call outs to be super clear, chat might be better. But podcasting, streaming, any sort of vocal recording for voiceover, audiobooks, like anything like that, uh, I think the podcast setting is is a lot better. On to noise reduction, and we have a few different settings here. This one is noise suppression, so we have echo cancellation, noise suppression, and then there's uh, AI noise reduction, which you can use. Here we have the noise gate, so you can use that if you find yourself peaking a lot. Then we have a de-esser. I usually use a de-esser in post. That's gonna get rid of those hard S sounds. But if you're a live streamer, then you might want something like this that you can use during the actual recording. On to voice effects. So we've got pitch, echo, amplify, reverb, compressor, and limiter all here. Um, these all have separate settings, so I can turn the compressor on. You can adjust thresholds, attack time, all that good stuff really fine tune these to get them exactly where you want them. And one of the things that I like is that they included a, a def, uh, default button so you can just automatically snap back to a Remedia's defaults if you feel like you've messed it up. That's really nice because I think it encourages people to tinker. You can play around with this stuff and see what you like better. So then we have EQ. And I didn't mess with the EQ too much, if I'm being perfectly honest. Uh, the default one that it has it set to, brighter and bassy, I do not think sounds good. So here, I'll give it a, I'll give you a show of it. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Please subscribe to High Ground Gaming. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Please subscribe to High Ground Gaming. See, not, not ideal. Um. I do unfortunately have to turn it on to show you the rest of it, so sorry if my voice doesn't sound as great for this part. Um, but hey, we're, we gotta leave one of them on, so we'll stick with mid-range boosts because at least it's clear. Uh, but what you can do is you can actually go in and you can make your own adjustments. So you can adjust the low to high end manually and then save it as a favorite, which you can, uh, which you can use later. So. There's a lot of different control here. Go ahead and turn that back off. Finally on the list, we have the voice changer. This is like a voice modulation effect sort of thing. I've seen this on a couple different softwares. A Rode has this on their software, I know that. But here, I'll go ahead and just show you real quick. So this is the man voice, which is, you know, it's like that uh, hostage negotiator voice or whatever. Uh, then and this one is labeled woman and then this one here is labeled robot pretty fun right to be to your leader there are a bunch of other ones here there's a uh, baby cartoon duck monster alien childlike voice bass killer electric sound ghost and trembling sound you can unlock those by creating a membership with Ava Media. I just didn't really have time to get into all that stuff just to look at different voice modulation stuff. I could definitely see uh, live streamers on Twitch or YouTube or something like that making use of these. That could be pretty fun for that kind of situation. Also podcasts, or even if you're like a DM running a D&D &D session, these could be fun for like different characters in your game. There's definitely a use case for these. And I definitely think that there are people who are really gonna get a lot of fun out of them. So I don't want to disparage them too much, but uh, they just weren't my primary point of focus. Overall, I think the Vibe Engine software is pretty good. I definitely really like the the way the voice test thing is set up. That makes it really useful. I love how approachable it is. It has a ton of different settings and effects that you can play around with, but there isn't a really steep learning curve. I feel like uh, if you're not a professional audio engineer, you could still come to this software and you could pretty confidently play around with this stuff and not really have to worry about making your voice sound terrible. So 
I, I think that's a, a big pro for the microphone. So I actually recorded that where I was talking about the software last week. And since then, I've encountered a couple of problems with the software. For some reason, I was having this issue where my voice was coming through really garbled. Uh, I was on Discord and my friend said it sounded like I was speaking through a fan. It was just really choppy and messed up sounding. And so at first I thought it was an issue with Discord, but then OBS and Audacity and all the other recording softwares that I tried to use suddenly sounded like that as well. And I thought that was strange because I hadn't messed with any of the settings, so I wasn't sure what was going on. It wasn't until I shut down the software and reopened it that suddenly my voice started sounding clear again. And I'm not really sure what was happening there, but it was, yeah, it was not great. Here's a quick clip of that sound. First of all, I want to say that physically, this thing is top notch. It's got this all metal, almost all black design with that little red ring on top there. Yeah, see? Not, not great. And I'm not really sure what caused it. Uh, it's quite possibly user error, something on my end. So I'm not going to take any points away from Avermedia for that, but I just thought I should mention it in the review. That's about it for the features on this guy though. Let's get down to the verdict. So the Avermedia Live Streamer 350 microphone MSRPs at $199.99. Now, Clearly, that is expensive for a USB microphone. Most of them are sub $100. So you're going to be asking yourself, what makes this worth twice as much as most USB microphones? And a lot of it is the software. Um, assuming that most people aren't going to encounter the problems that I did, that software is extremely versatile. It'll give you all kinds of options for how you want your voice to sound, which is really important, particularly in streaming. So because of that, we gave this a 4.1 out of 5. Misses a few points for some nitpicky stuff like the wobbly bass and also for uh, just some general issues that I kind of had while I was trying to get it working properly. But overall, I think it's a solid sounding microphone and I think it's reasonable to charge $200 for it. If it's not a great deal, it's a reasonable price. There's only one or two other USB microphones on the market that I feel can match the audio quality that this can produce without spending more money on extra software and stuff like that or hardware. And overall, I'm just really happy with the level of production quality that I've been getting since I've been using it. But why don't you go ahead and drop down into the comments and let us know what you think. And if you have this microphone, please, please share if you've had any of the same issues that I've had and whether or not uh, you found some sort of resolution for them. While you're at it, please like and subscribe if you haven't already. We've got a lot more content coming real soon and we'd hate for you to miss any of it. Okay, folks, thanks for watching. Happy gaming.